A couple of things to remember before you get started. You're going to be working with brake fluid, which is toxic to the paint of your car, so take care whenever working with the fluid. Also, you should have a set of flared nut wrenches. You do not want to strip out any of the fittings while working with the brake lines. In order to remove the master cylinder on the power brake cards, you need to first disconnect the actuating rod and mounting nut from inside the cockpit of the car. Remove the floorboard and remove the small pin that holds the actuating rod to the master cylinder. In addition, there is a small nut that holds the master cylinder to the chassis. Remove this nut before you move back to the front luggage compartment. The actuating pin is shown by the white arrow and the mounting bolt is shown by the green arrow. This photo affords us a great look at the master cylinder and the power assisted 911s. The two main brake lines are the metal ones exiting diagonally out of the master cylinder. The fluid is fed from the reservoir to the top of the master cylinder via the cloth braided rubber hose. The two electrical switches that exit out the side of the master cylinder are used to detect pressure drops in the system. Before you remove the master cylinder, make sure that you siphon off as much of the brake fluid as possible using a turkey baster or applicable tool. Disconnect the hoses that connect the master cylinder to the reservoir. Remember that you want to avoid spilling any brake fluid on your paint. On the manual brake cars, the master cylinder is held in using two nuts attached to the pedal cluster. On power brake cars, the vacuum booster holds the master cylinder using four nuts mounted to the floor of the front trunk. After you have the master cylinder removed, you can take it over to your workbench. Unbolt it from the vacuum booster and separate the two units. If your new master cylinder is missing any small hoses or fittings, then transfer them from the old one. Reattach the new master cylinder to the brake booster, being careful not to torque the nuts past the value of 25 newton meters. That's 18.4 foot-pounds. Make sure that you install the small O-ring into the master cylinder before you attach it to the brake booster. This is a good time to bench bleed the master cylinder. This process basically fills the master cylinder with fluid and primes prior to installing in the car. Bench bleeding the master cylinder can save a little time later on, but can also get a little bit messy. Installation is the reverse of removal, and remember, you must now completely bleed the brake system in your vehicle. Do not attempt to drive the vehicle until you have done a complete brake bleed on the car. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and check out another video in this series.